Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. I remember the first time I saw Dragon Ball Z on Toonami here in the UK and I was instantly hooked. I came in about halfway through the Freezer saga and I'd never seen anything like it. It's what got me into anime with crazy characters having massive fights and some actual quite decent character progression. I'm still a huge fan today and I'll regularly check out what Goku and Ko are up to or more importantly my favourite character Mr. Satan. I love that man. There have been nearly a hundred video games released based on Dragon Ball, which is no surprise considering all the punches and kicks and there we go. And here we're going to be taking a look at some of those games. As always, make sure to let us know what your favourites are in the comments below, as I'm sure there'll be a part 2 of this at some point. Now, how about I shut up and we take a look at some games. Let's start with a games based on Dragon Ball. One of the earliest Dragon Ball games was released for the Nintendo Famicom system in Japan called Dragon Ball Shenron no Nazo, which translates to Dragon Ball Shenron's Mystery. Now it's all in Japanese so I can't exactly tell you what the story is, but I'm guessing it follows the events of the cartoon. Are we allowed to call it cartoons? I know some people don't like it if you don't say anime. Oh well. You are Goku, and at the start of each level, Bulma says something in Japanese, likely giving you a brief hint as to what you're meant to be doing, as levels aren't always a case of just getting to the end. It's a top-down adventure game, and as Goku, you explore a number of locations, like forests, caves and towns, where you'll fight a bunch of enemies, collect items and wander around until you find a boss, and they will hopefully give you a Dragon Ball for defeating them. The action is simple enough, you just control Goku with the D-pad and you can punch and you can jump. There are enemies all over the place and the game really reminds me of the original Zelda game in terms of how it looks and controls, but not really in the gameplay. Killing enemies is a mixed bag, you can punch and most enemies die in one or two hits. The trouble is, the hitboxes are all over the place and it's easy to take damage when you really shouldn't. And what doesn't help is that you don't really get much indication that you are being hit. There's barely any knockback and instead of losing a bit of life while an enemy is close to you, your health just constantly depletes. Thankfully there's quite a few item drops which come in the form of capsules. These contain health, points or sometimes even your bow staff thing, which you can then have until the end of the level. This really helps with the combat as you have a much larger range. Also you can also get a speed up power up which is very handy. It's good for just getting around and you actually don't have to kill most of the enemies and I do recommend not bothering a lot of the time. When you reach a certain part of the stage you'll fight a boss. These are one on one side battles. They can be very tough, mainly thanks to the dodgy hit detection and the fact that their range is a lot bigger than yours most of the time. But if you do get to them with enough health and your bow staff, yeah I know it's called the power pole, you can brute force your way through. The cutscenes here are pretty cool and at some points you even get them mid-level with Bulma being taken hostage or something like that. It would be good to know what is going on in these as they're often quite funny looking, especially with Master Roshi being a creep. Overall though, I think this is a hard game to recommend these days. Many thanks to some of the old school jank and the hit detection. The actual exploration of the levels and puzzle elements and some of them is quite good, like having to find Oolong who can shapeshift into random objects. But you will die a lot. Thankfully you can continue from the start of the level that you're on as many times as you want to, but there's no saves or passwords, so you do still have to kind of beat it in one sitting. Give it a go though if you want to see a fun example of early Dragon Ball, but don't expect too much, though it's definitely not the worst game we'll be looking at today. Here is Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure for the Game Boy Advance. This is another retelling of the original Dragon Ball saga, with young Goku on his quest to find the Dragon Balls, along with Bulma, Krillin, Yamcha and all that jazz. In the story mode you play as Goku and you go through a surprising amount of levels in a side scrolling fashion. For the most part you just need to go from left to right, fighting loads of enemies along the way and I have to say it's really bloody fun. Controlling Goku is easy, you can run, jump, dash and have a few moves at your disposal. Enemies are all over the place and most are easy enough to deal with. You just need to hammer the attack button for your usual combos or you can do jump attacks, get up close to someone and you'll do a throw. As the game progresses you get a few special moves as well. You've got your stick thing, okay okay, power pole, and you do a few moves with that by pressing R. You do a special move where you spin it around your head hitting everything around you for massive damage. Eventually you learn to do a Kamehameha which can be done with the L button. What's cool is that as you play you earn more key which then lets you charge it more for an even bigger blast doing even more massive damage. 
The levels themselves are nice and varied, all recognisable locations from the anime, and you'll be fighting a ton of enemies from the show, mostly red ribbon soldiers, dinosaurs and robots, and they all look really great. The graphics and animation here are fantastic, and they really bring the game to life. The bosses in particular are really cool, being main ones from the show, where it plays a lot more like a very basic fighter. In these bits you have access to new attacks and specials, and you can block by holding back. Fighting Yamcha, Tien, Jackie Chan and so on is really fun like this. Some of the levels are also quite large and do require a bit more exploration with doors and routes to track down. It's also worth exploring anyway as that's how you'll find a lot of the power-ups that give you more health, key and a longer range for your power pole. They even throw in auto-scrolling levels which are a nice distraction and you can even take part in the martial arts tournaments. They've really done a good job of recreating the feel of the show in a cool 2D platform game and I'm all for it. I've actually owned this game since it was released and I'd forgotten how much fun it is to play. I probably haven't played it in over 15 years and I had a really hard time putting it down. This is just a great platform game that I would recommend to anyone. You don't need to be a Dragon Ball fan to enjoy it, but if you are, you will get that little bit more out of it. A must own for the GBA if you ask me. And if you like that game, then you'll probably want to also check out Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo for the Nintendo Wii. Again, this is a retelling of the Dragon Ball story where you control Goku through a bunch of levels all divided up into the different sagas and stories within it. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that this is just a 3D version of the Game Boy Advance game we just looked at, as it follows the same storylines and even a lot of the same gameplay mechanics, but this was released five years later, though it did have some of the same developers, so it makes sense. This time it's a 3D action platform game, though it's not one of those free roaming 3D games. It's more like a beat em up in the style of Streets of Rage. You are Goku and you've got to explore some quite large levels and of course fight a whole host of enemies until you reach the boss and then you kick their ass as well. Being a Wii game, the biggest worry is that they'll bolt on some crappy motion controls but that really isn't the case here. In fact, there's barely any motion controls in it. All of the combat is done with button presses and it's super easy to do, just hammer the attack button. You've got basic combos like this as well as a few special moves that you'll learn along the way, including your Kamehameha wave, which again is done just with the press of a button. you also got a lock on attack, which you can do to enemies when they're stunned. When they are, you just have to press the C button and you'll jump on them, either attacking them or grabbing them for a throw attack. It's easy, but in a good way, it's not overcomplicated for no reason. There's also a lot of platforming to be done here, and you'll have to explore the large levels looking for the exit, as well as hunting down treasure chests that will give access to unlockable items or power-ups that can then be bought in the shop, things like more health or key. You don't get them straight away, you have to find them in the chest, which then unlocks them in the shop for you to buy. You can also get character art and that kind of boring stuff. Something I have to mention here are the bosses. The enemies in general are all ones you'd expect from the show and they look great and have attack patterns to watch out for, but the bosses in particular are really cool and quite challenging, until you find out their patterns that is. I really like getting to them and the fact that this game has some really good cell shaded graphics just makes them even better to fight. As well as the story mode, you also have a world tournament mode, which is a one-on-one -on -one fighting mode, where you can choose from quite a few characters, a lot of which need to be unlocked. You can choose from people like Krillin, Yamcha, Tien, Chaozu, and Jackie Chan. This mode is a basic 3D fighter, where you use the same controls as the regular game to fight a few battles against these other characters. It's a nice distraction, though probably isn't something you'll visit again once you've unlocked everything. Still, it's nice to be able to play as a few other characters, and I'm surprised you don't get to play as them in the story mode. Unless I just haven't got to that part yet. I think I'm about halfway through. But yeah, I would say if you're a Dragon Ball fan that this is another game you should really be checking out. It's simple and probably won't take you too long to get through, but it is really fun and would definitely be a good introduction for younger gamers. Now let's move over to Dragon Ball Z now. First of all, here is Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension for the Super Nintendo. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighter that wasn't the first game on the system for Dragon Ball Z fans, but it's the only one we're looking at today, on the SNES. Randomly, Hyper Dimension was only released in Japan and some of Europe. I couldn't find an English version and had to settle with the French one. Now, I'm sure I've played a few versions of this game as well, but I might be remembering things wrong. In this one, you've got a few game modes, all of which are just one-on-one -on -one fights in some sort of variation with various tournaments or just single fights. There's no story or exposition. And I could have sworn that I played a version of this game that did have a story mode with cutscenes and it started with me fighting Piccolo with Freezer. Oh well. 
at least I got to see the funny way they say the names here, like how they call Gotenks Gotrunks. So here you get to choose from 10 characters, including Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Frieza, Cell, Boo and Gotenks. What's kind of cool is they've mixed up which character iterations you get, as this is set kind of at the end of the Boo saga. So for example you've got Margin Vegeta here, and Gohan after he's been powered up by the Grand Kai. So you pick your fighter, and then you have, unfortunately, a pretty underwhelming fighting game. You've got a punch button, a kick button, a key button, and another punch button thing that also lets you deflect attacks. The shoulder buttons let you dash left and right, and pressing X makes you fly. This is all well and good, but the actual gameplay is incredibly slow and choppy, making things feel incredibly stiff and unresponsive. When you press an attack, it takes a second or two to actually happen, and the frames of animation are all kinda odd. Surprisingly though, pulling off special moves is kind of easy, and does work about 70% of the time, which isn't ideal, but at least they work. The fact that this game is so slow means that you can do the inputs quite slowly, and it will still register, and I was surprised at how many special moves the characters have, with a handful of energy attacks and even super specials. Attacks will use key though, and you can press two buttons together to charge up, which even gives you a health back, but you'll be wide open for attack when you do. As you can fly, you can even take the fight into the air and have mid-air battles. This doesn't really do anything exciting though, and they're kind of hard to control, and you'll likely find it harder to hit your opponent thanks to the dodgy collision detection. Graphically, I kind of like how it looks. It's got a bit of a strange art style that's more serious and detailed than it should be. It doesn't really look like the show, but it works well, and I especially love how Vegeta looks. It's just a shame that the animation is so crappy and the controls unresponsive. For a game that is about hyper fast fighting, and even has hyper in the name, you'd think they'd make it a bit quicker. Oh well. But yeah, I'd say don't bother with this one really, unless you really have to play everything Dragon Ball related. The PS1 got a few Dragon Ball games, including Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22. Now, I haven't played Ultimate Battle 1 to 21, so don't know how they compare, but I don't think they can be much worse than this. This is another one on one fighting game, and I have to say, I really like the random ass roster of characters they've thrown in here. You've got your usual main characters, both good and evil, but then they've even thrown in the likes of Raccoon, Zarbon, Dabura, and Supreme Kai. I like that. You can even unlock a few others, including Mr. Satan, which automatically make this game a must play, even though it kind of sucks. It's a 2D fighter, and you have the usual game modes that see you fight people in one-on-one -on -one battles, much like Hyper Dimension. But it's often hard to tell if your button presses are really doing anything at all here. You've got a few attack buttons, an energy blast button, and some dashes, but the fights just feel so slow and unresponsive, and the hit detection is pretty damn terrible here as well, so often you feel your attacks are doing nothing. Also, there's no real combos to speak of, which, again, is what Dragon Ball is all about, so you just end up doing one punch or kick over and over again. There are special moves here, but pulling them off is really hard to do, and you can run out of key easily, which leaves you open to a world of pain. Of course, the computer AI has no problem pulling off super special moves over and over again, often making it hard to get in close to them, as they'll just blast you from a distance. The graphics here are actually not too bad. The characters really look like they're out of the show, and it looks great in stills. But again, the animation is so slow and choppy that it just brings the whole thing down. A few more frames and this would have been great. The levels are all 3D polygons, and it does look a bit strange coupled with the 2D sprites. I wouldn't say it's awful, but not particularly good. It's just such a shame here that the actual fighting is so slow and clunky, and pulling off moves is so damn inconsistent. This could have been fun, but instead it just really isn't. You'll likely play 4 or 5 matches and then never go back to it again. At least that's the case for me. Avoid this one. Back to the Game Boy Advance now for Dragon Ball Z The Legend of Goku. This is actually the first in a series of games for the system that takes the Dragon Ball stories and puts them in a top down action RPG game, though not particularly well. So yes, you play as Goku, and this game takes you from the start of Dragon Ball Z story where Raditz comes to town, through to the Namek saga and ending after the battle with Frieza. While the game does have most of the story elements, it definitely takes a lot of liberties to help the game pad out, which I really don't mind, mostly. So the game is top down, and as Goku you have to explore various towns, forests, deserts and even the planet Namek. The levels are packed with enemies to fight, and killing them gives you XP, levelling you up, making your attacks stronger and giving you more health and key. But I hear you cry, Goku is well-ard! What enemies does the game possibly have? 
and this is one of the problems that we have here. You start off fighting wolves and snakes in a forest, which is lame enough as it is, but even worse is that they can kill you a hell of a lot easier than you can kill them. That's right, wolves and snakes will kill Goku, who even at this part of his career can destroy mountains with his face. To be fair, a lot of this is down to crappy controls and combat. You can punch and that's it for your attacks, but you do have also a few key attacks which are unlocked as you play. Punching enemies is weak though and even wolves will take about 10 hits to defeat. As you level up it does get easier, but enemies also get tougher. Later on you fight more sensible things like the freezer force, but even then the combat is just crap. Most of your hits won't connect and enemies will literally just walk so close to you that they're inside you and your punches don't hit them, but of course they can still hurt you. Bosses take a ton of hits to kill and have no life bar so it's impossible to know if you're actually doing well or not. Also your key attacks are all but useless as you can't move and use them at the same time. So you have to stop to charge a Kamehameha but by this time the enemy has either wandered off or hit you which cancels the attack. Or most often what happens is you fire it at them and the range is so bad that it doesn't reach them anyway or if it does it just seems to go straight through them. It is painful and I'll be honest I had to resort to an invincibility cheat to get past the first boss. When you aren't in combat, you'll be exploring all the levels, completing menial tasks for NPCs. Now this is the bit I don't actually mind, as it's the usual action RPG stuff, and people ask Goku to help him with various things, which I think is in character with him to help them out. This usually involves exploring the surrounding locations to find items or lost characters and taking them back to where they need to be. To be fair, you don't have to complete most of these to progress, but you get loads of XP for doing it and you'll want to level up as much as you can here. You can also fly in this game at the press of a button, but only for a few seconds before your energy runs out, kind of making it pointless. But instead of just recharging like your key does, you have to find little icons with a leaf in them. No idea why, it sucks. The only real way to get anywhere in this game without using cheats, it's still to kind of cheat. You can actually save your game wherever you like, which is a great feature. And when you reload the game, you're back exactly where you saved it, but you always have full health and energy. So often what you'll want to do is fight an enemy, even if it's a lowly wolf, save your game, quit, reload it, and then you have full health again. Now when you have to resort to doing this against fucking wolves when you're Goku, you know something isn't right. This is another game that I bought when it was first released, back when I was in college, and I actually remember returning it and swapping it for something else, possibly the Astro Boy game, but I don't really remember. And yep, I'm glad I did. I don't like this game very much at all. It's a shame, as the premise is great, but actually playing it is just a chore. But what about its sequel, The Legacy of Goku 2? Well this one picks up from where we left off after defeating Freezer and takes us through the Android and Cell saga. Gameplay wise it is basically the same and it has definitely had a fair few improvements but just as many problems still. This time round you don't just play as Goku which is nice, you'll take control of Gohan, Trunks, Vegeta and so on as the story dictates. You still have random tasks to complete that are given to you by NPCs and you will want to do these to level up your characters again. There have been the usual liberties taken with the story as well to make it more video game friendly, but like before, I don't really mind that as it is a game, not the series. It has to be different. Thankfully, the combat has had some changes. Now, enemies won't walk into you, making it impossible to hit them, and they actually show the damage that you're doing, even giving enemies life bars, which is nice. And there is enemy knockback. Sadly, the hit detection still sucks, and you'll get hit in places where you really shouldn't have. The energy attacks are much faster here, but they still fucked it up, as your key now doesn't recharge over time. Instead you have to collect power ups from enemies or breakable stuff in the levels to refill it, but these can often just not appear for ages, leaving you unable to use your blasts for way longer than it should. Also the enemies, even early on, are just random shit. Instead of being like the freezer force or androids or something, it makes no sense on a game that is based on a series with literally hundreds of enemy designs. And yeah, even early on it's very easy to die. They have gotten rid of flying, which is a good thing. There are still parts where you can fly, but these are limited to getting around to new locations on the map screen using mode 7. I actually kind of like these bits. What I don't like though is that they've taken out the ability to save wherever you like. Instead you have to find checkpoints. This really sucks and is a massive step backwards. I ended up losing nearly 40 minutes of progress thanks to not finding a checkpoint in time and by then I had no intention of going back and repeating that part of the game. So yeah I would say that this is better than the first one but it's still not great. 
There is a third game in the series called Boo's Fury that takes you to the end of Dragon Ball Z I'm assuming, but by the time I'd finished playing these two, I just couldn't bring myself to try it. Hey, maybe it's amazing and maybe you'll like these ones. Give them a go if you want, just be prepared for some very janky, frustrating games. Over to the GameCube now for Dragon Ball Z Budokai, also released for the PS2 and Xbox. For me, this was the first really good Dragon Ball game that I played. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game that closely follows the plot of Dragon Ball Z, taking you through all the saga's biggest battles, letting you play as a ton of characters and finally having some of the fights that are worthy of the Dragon Ball name. What's impressive here is just how much attention has got into the storytelling. The cutscenes are amazing recreations of the series in a cool 3D engine. As far as I can tell, all the voice actors are back and it just looks fantastic. The fights themselves are also really fun. Now the combat isn't particularly in depth or complicated, but it kind of works in the game's favour. To attack you can punch, kick and have an energy button. You also have a block button and can charge up your key. All the attacks are done with various button combinations and you really do have to learn to do these properly, as there isn't much wiggle room. For example, to do a Kamehameha, you have to press punch four times and then the energy button. It works well, but is a little strange and if you do even slightly a wrong button combo, then it cancels it out. And it means you can't just suddenly do a Kamehameha, which is weird, and it is used as a close range attack. Also, it's orange, which is just plain wrong. The attacks are all done this way, and thankfully though, you do get a move list in the pause menu to remind you what they are. As you play, you'll unlock loads of new moves and perks, including new forms. You can then customise your characters with the movesets that you want to use, which I actually really like. Of course, you'll want to make sure to include Super Saiyan in there somewhere, but when you're kitting out your characters, you do also have limited slots for moves, so you have to choose wisely. For example, you can't go straight to Super Saiyan 2, you'll need to have Super Saiyan 1 and then Super Saiyan 2, meaning that the transformation takes up two slots, which one could be used for a special move if you don't want to have it. But the new transformations do give you stronger attacks and defense, so it is really fun to customize to how you like to play. Impressively, all the characters have unique moves that are straight out of the show as well. My main complaint with the story mode is that it's all very Goku heavy, and they skip over a lot of the battles with other characters, and just go to when Goku showed up. That's not to say you only ever play as Goku, but probably about 70% of the game is Goku based. Thankfully, you do have a number of tournament modes where you can choose from over 20 characters, most of which have a few different forms and transformations, and yes, you can play as Mr. Satan, or Hercule, depending on how you know him, which of course makes this game a must play. Going back to play this one after so many years, I was surprised at how well it holds up. It's not easy, and the AI kicked my ass a lot, especially when I got to Freezer. but he's a boss character, so what do you expect? If you're a Dragon Ball fan, then this is well worth playing. It's got great cartoony graphics that I can't quite tell if they're cell shaded or not. But there is a ton of detail everywhere, and the animation in the cutscenes and the fights is awesome. It can feel a bit stiff at times, and the way special moves work is a little bit odd to get used to, but it is still worth playing. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2 is a fantastic follow-up, also released for the same platforms. This is again the GameCube version, because it's the one I own. In terms of gameplay, it is very similar to the first one, so there's not a whole lot more to say about it in that regards. It is worth mentioning that it does feel tighter though, and pulling off the moves and attack combos is noticeably easier, which is nice. Also, they did change these special moves. This time, you can just do what you did before with the button combos, or you can use a specific command to do the move without the other button presses being needed. This is much better and makes energy blasts much more effective and easy to use. Oh, and the Kamehameha is actually a proper one this time. You also have nice little touches like being able to smash each other through the scenery if you do the right attack at the right time. These look cool and are some special moves that are basically cutscenes which look excellent. The story mode has been changed up, and as there's only so many times you can retell the sagas, this time it's been loosely adapted into what is essentially a board game, where you take it in turns to move around the level, collecting items that will increase your strength or defence, and if you move to the same space as an enemy, you'll have a fight with them, and you can all lose lives. I did have fun with this game mode, and you'll want to play through it if you want to unlock all of the 30 plus characters and their various forms, but the fights are really fun to play, so you won't really mind. 
you do get some cool characters to unlock as well. Of course, Mr. Satan is back, as is Videl, which is nice. And something I really love is they get a few fusion what-ifs, including what if Goku fused with Mr. Satan, or Hercule, to become Goku. Now, if that isn't worth playing the game for, I don't know what is. So yeah, if you like fighting games, this might be a little basic for you, but it's still fun. Though if you are a Dragon Ball fan, this should be right up there on your playlist. Now there is a Budokai 3 that didn't come out on the GameCube, so I haven't played that, but I'm assuming it's probably more of the same, which definitely isn't a bad thing. Now onto something really special, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3, shown here on the Nintendo Wii. There are of course two other Budokai Tenkaichi games before this one, and I do actually have the Wii version of number 2, but I couldn't find my copy of it. Thankfully, I knew exactly where this one was. Anyway, this is the evolution of the Budokai series, and this one is by far the best in the series, and if you ask me, this is the best Dragon Ball Z game ever made. It's still a fighting game, but this time the action takes place in third person in some quite large 3D arenas, and it just works so damn well. Once again, you play through all the various Dragon Ball Z sagas, starting with the Saiyan Saga all the way through to the Majin Buu Saga. And what's even better is that this game includes the movies, so you get to play through films with fights such as Garlic Jr., Broly, Janemba, and even some of the GT stories with Evil Shenron, Baby, and more. There's just so much content here, it is ridiculous. In fact, there's more than 100 characters to choose from here. In fact, there's 163 that you can unlock, and that's just crazy and I love it. Now granted, this does include all the different transformations of characters as their own character, but still. But what about the fighting, as that's what you'll be doing here? Well, it is really great if you ask me. It's easy to pick up and play, but there's definitely a whole lot here for you to try and master. There is a mixture of button combinations and motion control, but the motion control here is done incredibly well. For most of your attacks, you just press the A or B buttons to do them, with different moves being available depending on when you press A and B in terms of the combo, as well as how long you hold them down for. It's kind of hard to explain, but does make sense and is natural to do when you're actually playing. Pressing A and B at the same time lets you block, and if you time it right, you'll automatically dodge or teleport out of the way to do a counter. What's cool is that you can both teleport and counter each other's counter teleports, meaning you can do 5 or 6 in a row, and it just feels amazing and looks great when you do it right. You can move and fly anywhere you want with the analog stick, and this is easy to do. When you attack, you'll automatically lock onto your opponent, which is nice. But the special moves are where it's at. This is where the motion controls come in. Each character has four special moves, one of which being their ultimate special. You hold down any direction on the D-pad to charge your key. Each move uses a different amount and is assigned to a different direction. What you need to do is hold down the direction on the D-pad of the move that you want to do, and then a prompt will appear on the screen to show you the action you need to do with the Wii Remote to actually do the move. So, for a Kamehameha, you have to actually pull your arms back as if you were really doing the move, and that will start to charge it. Then, when you're ready, you push your arms forward and you unleash the move, and it actually works and feels so damn good. The longer you hold back the move, the more it charges up and the more damage it does. If you want to do a spirit bomb, for example, you can hold the direction on the D-pad, then you've got to put your hands above your head to charge it, and then when you're ready, throw it down at your opponent. I really can't describe how much I love how it's done. Things like the special beam cannon make you hold your hand to your head and then throw it forward. It really is just like you'd expect, and once you've learned a character's moveset, doing them becomes second nature. Also, if you're using a character with transformations, you can use these as you fight. So you can start a match as regular old Goku, but if you fight and power up enough, you can end the match as Super Saiyan 3 Goku, complete with all of the attacks that he learns along the way. As well as this, battles aren't just one on one now. Instead, you can switch between a few characters at certain times, and in versus mode, you can do team battles, which are loads of fun. As well as the story mode, there's loads of what-if battles and challenges you can play through. All of these things give you in-game money that you can use to buy more characters, new moves, costumes and more. As I said, there is just so much content here. All of the characters are fully voiced and the game looks fantastic with great cell shaded graphics and animation. What's cool is that the characters are also balanced as they are in the show, in, sort of. There are some liberties which make it playable. So what I mean is, if you're like me, and you play as Mr. Saturn as often as possible, it's actually very hard to win a fight, as he's so weak and kind of is a joke character, so when you actually hit your opponent, they don't even flinch. Likewise, if you're a character from early on in the show, they have considerably less health and strength than characters from the end of the series, but you can also play with the balancing options when fighting a friend to make it fair. 
Now, I really could bang on about how great this game is for hours, but I will leave it there as we've got to move on to Dragon Ball GT. But I really can't tell you how great this game is. There's so much value for your money here. It was also released for the PS2, but honestly the Wii version has to be the way to go thanks to the awesome motion controls that really do add to the gameplay for a change. But I haven't played the PS2 version, so don't quote me on that. So yeah, I love this game. It's easily in my top 10 Wii games and a must have for any Dragon Ball fan. But make sure you play it on real hardware. I'm playing it here on my Wii U and it looks and plays perfectly in glorious HDMI. Right, on to Dragon Ball GT now, the black sheep of the Dragon Ball universe. Thankfully there's only two games that I have. The first is Dragon Ball GT Transformation for the Game Boy Advance. This is a beat em up in the style of Streets of Rage or Final Fight but follows the Dragon Ball GT story. So you get to play as Goku, Trunks or Pan as you explore a bunch of planets trying to track down the evil Black Star Dragon Balls which you need as Goku has been turned into a kid by accident and you need to transform him back and if you don't do it within a year the earth will explode. Sad times. Being a beat em up it's pretty simple, you move from left to right and the screen will lock, a bunch of enemies will appear, you beat them to a pulp and move on. Unfortunately it's just not done very well, in fact the whole game just kind of feels unfinished. Graphics wise it's not too bad and looks like the show, the animation is kind of there but also it kind of feels very cheap, it's hard to explain but when you play it it just doesn't feel precise and the hit detection here never feels quite right. You don't choose to play as a single character throughout the whole game, which is nice. Instead, you play as all three, and you can switch between them at almost any time as long as they have life left. So essentially you have three lives per level. They all pay basically the same, just with the same basic attacks and combos and a couple of energy blasts, but they have differences in terms of like speed and stuff like that. I did find that the reach with Goku's stubby kid arms made him trickier to play as though. Trunks was better but is a bit slower leaving him open to attack and Pan is the fast but weak one, she's alright. As with most games like this you get a ton of enemies but they aren't that tough, instead they just outnumber you, which is where the challenge comes in. Most enemies only take a few hits but it's easier said than done thanks to the dodgy collision detection and you will miss a lot of the time. Also the game does something which I really hate, mainly with Trunks, which is when you do a jump attack it's just his regular punch but in the air, no new animations or anything. This is so lazy and I hate it, it just feels useless, as are most of the energy attacks which take way too long to charge and don't really do much damage anyway. Punching people is always more effective. The bosses as well are a pain for the same reasons, they will often ignore your attacks or just hit you even when you're nowhere near them. Still, even with the issues, this game isn't that hard, but like most games in this genre, it does get quite repetitive after just a few levels. Enemies are basically reskins, and the repetitive droning music doesn't do the game any favours. The levels all look quite different with some nice backgrounds, but the enemies lack any real flair, and even though most stages are their own, there'll be about 3 or 4 different enemies repeated constantly throughout them. I haven't managed to beat this one yet, mainly because I got bored after not too long, and to be honest I don't think I'll bother going back to finish it. After all, developers didn't bother to put much effort into making it, so why should I? Here's one a lot of you have probably been waiting for, it's Dragon Ball GT Final Bout on the PlayStation 1. And yes, believe it or not, I own an actual copy of this game and have done for years after buying it alongside Silent Bomber and Xena from WH Smiths in Winchester years ago. Anyway, this is one of the worst one-on-one -on -one fighting games that I have ever played and I would even go so far as to say that it is honestly one of the worst games I've ever played full stop. It is a terrible one-on-one -on -one fighting game featuring 10 characters from Dragon Ball Z and GT, but no matter who you choose, it's just plain awful. And here's the best thing, I played one fight and then after that the game would just crash every time I tried to load a new fight, so I could literally only play one time. And I would like to thank Supreme Kai for blessing me with that problem, because one fight was enough. I really can't begin to explain how terrible this game really is. Firstly the graphics, they are incredibly basic, but to be fair I have seen worse on the system. Still, they aren't good. They've tried to do some things like having cutscenes for certain special moves which should be applauded. 
but actually playing the game is so damn bad. It really is like your controller is not plugged in. Attacks barely work and the animations are slow, clunky and laggy and then it makes hitting your opponent almost impossible. It looks like my character is just twitching around like a maniac here but literally all I'm trying to do is press the punch button. It is totally unacceptable and just broken. I've never played a game with controls this bad and I've played Dark Castle and Mondu's Fight Pass on the Mega Drive but this really takes the cake. And honestly, that's all I want to say about this one. It is truly terrible. So you know what I'm going to recommend? Go and play it. Don't buy it, but get it for your PlayStation 1 emulator. I know you've got one. And immediately play it with a friend so you can truly experience how bad this game is. I am not over exaggerating and I'm definitely not the kind of person that's over dramatic about these kind of things, but this game really does live up to its bad reputation with absolutely no redeeming qualities. And finally for this long ass video, here is Dragon Ball Fighters with a Z, which I guess is based on Dragon Ball Super as it has characters from that series, but not really. This is another one on one fighter, well actually it's usually three on three, but it goes back to the 2D style and it's done incredibly well. There is a story mode, but it's not really the main focus and is kind of lame to be honest. You choose to play as either the heroes, villains or androids and the story plays out from each one of their perspectives. After a bunch of characters are inhabited by a strange presence, you basically, and there is a convoluted story about them figuring out what's going on, and it turns out that there's an evil android that no one knew about that's causing all sorts of trouble, but much like Cell was made up of fighters from the Freezer saga, this new android has DNA from Margin Boo, making it even more dangerous. Basically, this is an excuse for you to have a fight with loads of clones of the other characters in the game, which is kind of lame. This plays out in a board game sort of fashion with you landing on spaces with certain events and characters that will then join your party. But as I said, the story isn't the main focus, this is more of a tournament fighter game and thankfully the fights here are awesome so you won't be that bothered anyway. I have to say that the character selection is kind of random and there aren't as many characters as I would have liked. It's not bad though, you've got all the Saiyans of course as well as Piccolo, Krillin, Yamcha, Tien, Frieza, Cell, Fat Boo and you've also got Lord Beerus, Hit, Gok and Black and a few of the androids. Then randomly you've got people like Nappa and Captain Ginyu. It's nice to have some of these characters that you wouldn't normally think would be included but they aren't the ones that I would have chosen. And of course there are more characters if you want to pay real money for them to unlock them, which I do not. These include Jiren, Master Roshi, Janemba and even more Saiyans. Oh, and no Mr. Saturn. So this game is actually kind of shit. Something that is a bit of a shame is that you can't go between forms for characters. So if you're playing as Goku or Vegeta, they are always Super Saiyan. Or if you can be bothered to unlock them, you can have their Super Saiyan Blue versions. The only exception here is Frieza, whose super special is to transform into Golden Frieza. But the actual fighting here is excellent. It is easy to pick up and play, but if you play against a good player, like my friend Edwin, who you might remember from my Super Mario stream, then you'll soon realise that there is a lot to learn. I could barely touch the guy, and he kicked the shit out of me every single time we played. But that's alright, it's how you learn. You have three attack buttons, a weak, medium and strong one. Just hammering each one of those over and over will do good combos that often end in special attacks. You also could have an energy blast button and you do special moves Street Fighter style. And something that is a bit of a shame is that to do special moves it's basically the same no matter what character you choose. Which I get does make things easy to learn, but I would have liked a bit more depth. Now that's not to say that they're all easy to use. Characters like Hit and Beerus in particular feel very different to the other ones, but doing super moves is literally the same button commands no matter who you are. It does mean that putting together massive combos with all of your characters and getting a few hits in is easier to do and super satisfying, especially when you finish a combo by smashing an opponent through a mountain or with a destructive finish that takes out half the continent in the process. You'll also need to learn to block and counter, as well as use your chase moves. Some attacks use key, and you'll need to charge up during fights to make sure that you have enough to do your special moves. Something you've already noticed are the incredible graphics. I'm playing this on the PS4 and it just looks amazing. The character models are perfect and the special moves look incredible and devastating. The bit where new characters come on the screen never gets old, and there's no loading between characters. Instead they just fly in and it looks great, just like the show. In fact, there isn't really a whole lot to complain about here if you want a fighting game that's easy to get into but has a lot to learn if you're willing to put in the time. Being simple doesn't mean it's easy, and when playing the arcade mode or tournament modes you will soon learn that the CPU can be a real dick, wiping out your entire team before you've even had a chance to blink. 
but then again, if you learn to play the game, you'll be able to do the same. I do wish there were more ways to counter or do combo breakers, and that seems like a bigger mission to me. There's times where you might as well just put your controller down and go make a cup of tea while the computer, or Edwin, does a massive combo at you and there's literally no way for you to defend yourself or get out of it. But still, the game is super addictive and you can't help but play for a few hours even when you've just meant to go on for a fight or two. I would have liked a bigger character roster and some better defensive options, but other than that, this game is hella fun and one that I would recommend to any fighting game fan, even if you don't care about Dragon Ball. But I guess if you don't care about Dragon Ball, you're probably not watching this video anyway. But yeah, definitely check this one out. So there you go, a buttload of Dragon Ball games that you might want to play and some that you really shouldn't play. There's still dozens more out there, most of which I haven't played, so as always let me know which games I should check out for if and when I do a part 2 of this subject. I've heard that the Kakarot game is quite good. And now, all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.